it's Lucy and Jeff going for walks and talks, talk about banksters and Bitcoin and the apocalypse and stuff. It's Lucy and Jeff and tacos and kisses. How you doing today, Lucy? Well, pretty good. Just we're having some breakfast and all the dogs are here. There's Bruce and we got uh, Luna and Polo and oh, there's Casper and Lucky and Bailey's and Cielo and oh, there's Lady and Rango's and Coco's. So yeah, we're just having some breakfast. We might go on a little trip. <laughs> yeah, so actually I'm starting to like this idea of being able to do sort of quick videos. I could have done it before, but I just never even thought about it. <clears throat> that, uh, you know, because I've been doing these Dollar Vigilante videos, which by the time I say everything, I kind of, not even everything I want to say, but quite a bit of what I want to say. It's like an hour and a half long and it's on 20 different topics. So this is kind of cool. So anyway, let's get right into it. So I just got off messaging with Kim Kyland, who's one of the directors of The Anarchists, along with her, I don't know if they're boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, wife, whatever, they're, they're a couple. And uh, Todd uh, Schramke, and uh, she was like, I don't know how you handle this. And I'm like, what? And she's like, all the death threats and stuff. And I was like, why are you getting death threats? Like, I'm totally used to it. But yeah, like, <laughs> when she said that, <laughs> she's like, I was like, <laughs> it's, it's like saying to a fish, like, how, how do you get used to uh, being in the water? It's like, all I've ever known is being in the water. All I've ever known is people hating on me my whole life. And I think partly because I speak a lot of truth and it scares people <laughs> and it, it challenges people as well. But anyway, so I didn't realize. And then she sends me a few voice messages and like she said she was like crying last week. And, uh, and so I was like, what are they saying? Cause I don't even go on social media. And she started sending me a bunch of memes and, and I was just laughing at a lot of the memes. Some of them are great. So, it looks like, you know, this whole cancel culture thing, right? A lot of them are basically communists or, you know, li liberals, they call themselves, but they're basically communists and uh, they're useless. They've never been able to produce anything their entire life. That's why they're communists. They hate the world because they've never been able to, have, to figure out how to have a decent life. And uh, they just attack everything that uh, isn't communist, basically. And so... <laughs> she sends me some of the memes, and these are hilarious. I'm going to throw them in. Here's uh, The Anarchist coming soon on HBO Max. Actually, I just realized we're, I do all these videos in one cut. I was going to say to my video editor to throw it in, but uh, I'm trying to do these quick, and I don't want him to have to actually edit anything, so I do them all one take. So <laughs> he should have thrown on the, uh, the the guy with 20 different pop colors. That's uh, That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> And then she sent me a whole bunch more. Here's the anarchist with the Winklevoss twins, who I don't even know, by the way. I know most people in crypto. I don't even know them. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're not anarchists uh, from what I've seen, although they do a lot of great stuff that I've seen um, or decent stuff anyway. Actually, you know, I really don't know. I've never really paid attention to them. I, I'm thinking of someone else. I thought maybe they started Kraken, which is one of the better crypto exchanges. Anyway. Whole point is, we don't even know the Winklevoss twins, but that's what they think it's about. Which is really odd, considering the first episode's the only one that's out so far. And we barely even mentioned the word crypto. I think it's mentioned once. And everyone's like, this is a crypto bros. These aren't real anarchists, they're crypto bros. It's like, the word Bitcoin might have been mentioned once. <laughs> I think there'll be some more mention of it as it goes along. Because definitely, we are, are sort of the the people who go to a place like Anarchapoco, uh, almost everyone, not everyone, by the way, some people don't like crypto. Some people actually say it's a, uh, a sort of a Illuminati sort of a thing. They don't trust it. A lot of anarchists don't trust anything. Uh, but they could even be right. Like, I don't know who started Bitcoin either. But I would, will say if the CIA started it, they really fucked up because now we have Monero and now they're screwed. We have real free market money. And the reason why a lot of the anarcho-capitalists uh, are quite excited about crypto is because 
the biggest pillar of the state. If you're an anarchist, you shouldn't want a state. The main way to take it down is to take away their control of money. But commies don't understand money anyway. The whole point of a lot of this is like commies... Like I should actually throw out a, a, a fig leaf here a little bit. Because I will say a lot of bad things about commies for obvious reasons in my opinion. But <clears throat> a lot of them are angry that we call ourselves anarchists. Because to them, anarchist means... I'll actually get into that. Someone even wrote about it. It's like 20 other things other than you don't believe in the legitimacy of a ruling class and therefore you don't believe anyone should be a slave. That's what anarchy means, the word. They throw in tons of other stuff and they don't like it when we don't add any of those other things. <laughs> and that's really what an anarcho-capitalist is, is someone who just says, I just don't believe there should be a, a ruling class and people shouldn't be slaves. And uh, Everyone should just be allowed to do anything they want as long as they don't aggress against others. That's basically what it means. But anyway, so they got all these other memes. There's the... Uh <laughs> they put the dollar sign over anarchist. Yeah, we call ourselves anarcho-capitalists, although we hate the dollar, or most people do. In general, it's government money. We don't hate having dollars, but we, like, I, I'm the dollar vigilante. I've been talking for 12 years about sell your dollars in all government currency and buy things like cryptocurrency and precious metals, which have both gone up dramatically since I started. And by dramatically, I mean hundreds of thousands of percent in the case of crypto. And uh, we started in 2010, gold was around 1,000, now close to 2,000. Double your money, you know, it's, it's terrible what I've done. But, uh, yeah, the, the whole, once you get into this whole idea of anarchism or libertarianism, there's all kinds of, like, subsections and different uh, varieties. And uh, one is called minarchism, which we mostly use to say it's someone who's pretty darn close to an anarchist, but still thinks the state is necessary for one or two things. And it's usually things like courts, police and uh, border control so other governments don't take over your government. And well, I, I didn't throw out the fig leaf to the commies yet, but I will in a sec, I forgot to. But I'll throw out a fig leaf to the minarchists. If the entire world was minarchist, I wouldn't even bother having an archipoco because we'd be pretty darn close to where I think the world should be. But the problem is when you have a small state, like the US was very small in 1776, it wasn't very much long later before it became not that small. And now look at it. It's the biggest monstrosity terrorist organization on earth. So that's the problem with minarchism. And even the founding fathers of the US uh, warned that if you don't keep your eye on this thing, like every minute of every day and everybody, it will grow into a monster that you'll have to kill or be killed. And that's where we're at basically today. So, they're saying we're minarchists. I don't know how much more anarchists we could get. I guess what they're saying is we're not real anarchists. We're minarchists or minimum anarchists because we also don't believe we, you should use violence to make it so people don't use currency to trade and to own property. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the word anarchy. See, the reason a lot of these people are angry is because they've kind of co-opted that word, like almost every word, even the word liberal. Like Hillary Clinton calls herself a liberal. Half the people in the U.S. call themselves liberals. It used to mean almost an anarchist. It used to mean laissez-faire. It used to mean let people do what they want. Don't impede them. Now it doesn't mean that. Now it means wars and, and uh, welfare and food stamps and, and uh, government indoctrination camps and, and uh, extorting you for everything on everything you do. That's what it means now, but it used to mean almost anarchist. So they get a little mad when uh, we kind of point out that that's not the, what the word means. <laughs> but they don't care about that. They, anyway, it's just kind of funny. I'm just going to quickly go through these. Here's one. HBO, a Bitcoin convention in Mexico for aging grifters and abusers. <laughs> there's, there's almost every year some stuff at an archipelago about crypto. Usually we have one day for it, and the other four days, 
is on other stuff, usually quite anarchy related. But crypto itself is anarchy related. It's money outside of governmental systems and central banks. And central banks can't exist without governments, by the way. It's a whole other topic. There's so many topics. It's weird, like I haven't talked about this stuff in years, but now it's becoming a, uh, a topic with lots of people so I can actually talk about it. I used to talk about this stuff like nonstop, like 10 years ago. So let's see what this one is. BHBO, decide to make a documentary about anarchists. Try to find anarchists willing to let us film them. They keep saying fuck off, fed boy, and chasing my camera crews off. Finally find a group willing to let, let me film them. Wah, wah, they're anarchists, or uh, ANCAPs. <laughs> so, just so that, okay, here's my fig leaf to the anarcho-communists. Like, for example, this person doesn't think we're anarchists. He thinks we're something else. And even in that thing, he says real anarchists would tell the Fed boys to fuck off. And they're totally right. That's what we would do too. We don't like feds either at all. So here's the sort of the fig leaf. There's some things we agree on. Uh, some of the things that the narco-communists believe are just stupid. <laughs> like how many times do you have to try something? Like if anarcho-capitalism had been tried dozens of times in human history and every single time at the end of it, before it all collapsed, nearly everyone was killed or starved to death, I would be seriously reconsidering if anarcho-capitalism works as a model for society in the world. <laughs> but no, every time, like look at Soviet Union, how many people died in the gulags? Uh, communist China under Mao, uh, tens of millions starved to death. Uh, Cuba, just go there. I love all the people who are commies, but don't go to Cuba. It's actually not horrible. Like, uh, like it's not death on the streets. Right there. Actually, there's not much crime because it's a total police state, which isn't really communist, by the way. But the rest of it's commie. And so everyone's just dead broke and trying to escape all the time. Venezuela, quite commie. How's that been going? I actually went there. I've gone to all these places. I've gone to Somalia when they say Somalia is anarchy. It's not. <laughs> uh, some parts are. Uh, Somaliland's pretty close. They're actually friends with our other country that we've been starting called Lieberland. But anyway, I want to keep this shorter. <laughs> but it seems like a lot of people are just angry because they think we're all rich. Well, it's only been one episode and I know who's in it. Everyone in the thing, in the documentary, except for me, is dead broke. <laughs> uh, Lily and John came to Acapulco. They lived in one of the worst ghettos in Acapulco because they had no money. And uh, eventually John got shot in the ghetto in Acapulco. So you know those rich anarchists, right? Another person in it is Erica Harris from Chicago. She lived in Mexico for quite a while. She moved to Belize, I think partly because uh, they speak English there, but she didn't want to go back to the US. She's pretty darn broke. I think she does some copy editing for a living or something. It, she's always living in a pretty cheap apartment. No offense to Erica, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it's not all rich anarchists. And the other, uh, well, Larkin Rose, he's always broke. I, it's actually one thing I've been trying to help him with for like 10 years. He's actually, he doesn't realize it fully. He's got some programming in his head that he, th he thinks money's bad. He's actually on, he, he could have a fig leaf with the commies too, because a lot of people have been programmed with this stuff. But anyway, he's always broke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not a secret. Like, he's, he's of the ANCAP movement. He's one of our biggest, most prolific writers and speakers. He spends most of his time painting sheds so he can get food. So that's another of those rich anarchists, right? And then the last one is the Freeman family. Nathan Freeman had a software company. He did okay, it looked like. Although, at the time of his death, this all came as a total surprise to me, it turned out... And I think we'll, I'll, I'll find out in the documentary a lot more because I wasn't in contact with them during the, that period of time. But it, it, the story was that he had just given pretty much all of his money to someone who said they needed it and were going to pay him back. And it turns out the person basically just ripped them off. So at the time of his death, he, his family, Lisa, had, and the family, 
which is a beautiful family, by the way, is, uh, was dead broke. In fact, the anarchist community, uh, I remember the GoFundMe at the time was around 70000 or something, just so Lisa had a place, you know, and she could afford food for a while and, you know, get resettled in her new life after her husband just died. So those are all the rich <laughs> anarchists. And then there's me, and here's a funny thing. They, far they started the show uh, talking about the first in Arcapulco in 2015. In 2015, I had just lost everything in what turned out to be basically a, is a massive screw up, but also a fraud in Chile on a real estate development. And I was dead broke. I actually remember Nathan Freeman, uh, and I was just, I was actually suicidal. I was, I was you know, I was broke, <laughs> but I, I decided to do an Arcapulco anyway. And I just drank the whole time through it because I was basically trying to kill myself. And uh, Nathan, when uh, he said he wanted to manage it, I said, you know, this thing can't lose money. I just lost everything. I have no money. Uh, so you need to be like, make sure this thing doesn't lose money at the very least. And if it makes money, that'd be great because I have basically no money. I was dead broke in 2015 when the show started. I'm not as broke anymore. Bitcoin hit 60,000 a few months ago. Uh, I sold some. I read all about it in the newsletter, by the way. You can go to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe. I just wrote a huge thing on what I'm doing right now. Anyway, I should get back to this. So these are all the things they're being hit with. And then she's getting stuff like this. First episode of the Anarchist HBO centers around a right-wing anti-Semitic grifter and features appearances and clips from Milo Yiannopoulos, troll with deep ties to white supremacists, and Keith Preston, regular speaker at white nationalist conferences alongside Richard Spencer. Okay, that's an interesting one. A lot of people call us right wing. We're no wing, but we're not commies. <laughs> uh, they say I'm an anti-Semitic. I've pointed out there's a lot of uh, people who call themselves Jewish that control a lot of the things the globalists do that are, are horrible. I've also said that I love Jewish women. <laughs> In Tel Aviv, Israel, oh my God, so smart, so beautiful. So if that's anti-Semitic, I don't know. I just point out what's actually going on and how I feel. Oh, and then they threw it. I, the, this is one part of the documentary. It was just for like three seconds that I kind of grimaced because they actually showed Milo Yiannopoulos. We invited him. In the old days, we'd invite one person every event that wasn't an anarchist, but seemed like they could be or get close. And he did seem that way when he spoke at the conference. But he really isn't, and uh, I don't really support a lot of the other stuff he does, really. Although I don't even know what he does anymore, but he doesn't really represent what the usual sort of speaker is at Narcopoco. He was sort of like an invited guest. Here's another one. The executive producer and director of HBO's The Anarchists attend right-wing events and are COVID denialists. Well, yeah, we all are COVID denialists. Uh, Kim Kyland, executive producer, is Facebook friends with QAnon conspiracy theory leader Ron Watkins, administrator for 8 Kuhn, a haven for neo-Nazis and mass shooters. That, uh, Kim was telling me, they went to a friend's uh, who was in a movie or something. They were invited to the movie premiere. So now they're right-wing Nazis. Here's another one. This is a documentary focused around far-right conspiracy theorists, Bitcoin bros, and anti-Semites. Okay, so basically the same thing. Has nothing to do with the anarchist movement. Okay, with your anarchist movement, because we're not commies. <laughs> and uh, let me see if I got anything else here. She sent me some voice messages after that. Oh, here's a interesting one. Here's from It's Going Down. Jeff Berwick identifies as right wing. No, I don't. <laughs> I say the whole right wing, left wing thing is a scam. I don't believe in any sort of politics. That's why I'm an anarchist without politics, basically. So I'm not right wing, although you can. they say because I make money <laughs> that I'm a capitalist, uh, which makes me right wing. I just believe in free markets and I work hard and I make money. Is, is, that, is this a big problem? Anyway, let's get back to this. It says, anarchism has always been an anti-capitalist, anti-racist and anti-fascist movement. If your goal is to make Firefest but make it crypto, congrats. But if you were looking to actually document anything connected to the actual anarchist movement, then you failed spectacularly. 
What's most ironic is that while your series focuses on a group of very rich libertarians from the U.S. coming to Mexico, <laughs> uh, no one is rich. I was even broke at the time. Mexico actually has a very deep anarchist history whose influence is still felt in a variety of autonomous anti-capitalist movements. But we bet the growing network of towns kicking out cartels and political parties and declaring autonomy, the continuing struggle of the Zapatistas and the modern anarchist movement fighting in the streets against femicide and beyond if of little interest to you or HBO. I think we both know that's a movie that's never going to happen, but hey, congrats, you made a movie about a rich guy who hates Jews. <laughs> yeah, that's how you can boil me down. Just a rich guy hates Jews. That's, that's, that's me. <laughs> but here's, okay, so I still haven't really thrown out the uh, fig leaf to the anarcho-communists. <laughs> it's hard to do, but I'm getting there. But notice in here, he points out, this guy's probably never been to Mexico, by the way. Uh, but he, he knows so much about it. Anyway, I've lived in Mexico the last 15 years. And uh, he points out the Zapatistas. And I, here's a little bit of a fig leaf. I've never really looked into them all that much. I hear they might be quite anarchist, but I've also heard they're quite communist. And the two words don't mix, in my opinion. <laughs> but you know where I have been? Uh, and I'm actually a fairly decent part of it, is a town of 30,000 people called Chiran, Mexico that kicked out the government and cops and politicians uh, and cartel guys uh, about, I don't know, 10 or so years ago, and it's going incredibly well. They've spoken at Anarchapoco numerous times. Uh, so there's an anarcho sort of what they could think of as capitalist movement because they're not commies. They think anything not commie is capitalist. And they think capitalism is bad. It's, it's just free trade. Like what's wrong with free trade? So. Where, how was I going to throw a fig leaf to these anarcho commies? Oh, I remember. You know, th they hate rich people. This, of all the things to hate, I hate people who have more things than I do. <laughs> like, that is, you really need to work on yourself. This is kind of the fig leaf. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> like, I personally don't hate anyone on earth. I don't hate Donald Trump. I don't hate pedophile Joe Biden. I don't hate Hillary Clinton. I don't hate Barack Drone Bomber. I don't hate any of the Federal Reserve chairmans. I don't hate Kill Gates for doing his thing. <laughs> I can't say on YouTube. Uh, I don't hate Satan Klaus. I don't hate anyone. I, I just don't have that kind of hate. I don't, there's no one, I've been defrauded, uh, lost everything like in 2015. I don't hate the guy. I actually understand kind of why he did it. He's, he's he fucked up. He's living in his mind, in his ego. He's uh, got uh, issues. Yeah, I'm not even going to talk about him, but I don't hate anyone. And, and then you have people, they hate people who have, have uh, stuff. <laughs> so you know what it really is with a lot of these people? They're really unhappy. They're really poor. And they're jealous of other people who have stuff and they want to destroy them all so they can all be like them, all poor together. <laughs> I've got a better idea, okay? Just stick with me. Come on. You watch all my other stuff. You see how I talk about how I hate Jews all the time, right? You can watch this for like one minute. Let it go, man. <laughs> You don't have to hate anyone. If you would stop hating and being all jealous and uh, what's that other word? I don't even know because I don't feel these things like they do. I don't know why, but I don't. I don't feel uh, like if, if I hear someone's doing really well, I'm like, good, good for, good for him. Like, but they're like, ah, oh. it's not jealousy. There's another word for it. Anyway, I want to keep this video short. We're actually about to go on a, a trip at the moment. Got all the dogs ready. But my, my little fig leaf to the anarcho communists is, and, oh, here, here's the actual fig leaf, okay? I think I I've, I've remember what I was going to say. The Anarcho-Poco conference started with a lot of anarcho-capitalists who were very, very angry, very similar to the anarcho-commies. But because we're capitalists, we don't, we're not super poor, so we're not that unhappy. But you know what happened? Here's the real fig leaf, okay? The real reaching out to the anarcho-communists is... Over the course of seven years, almost all of us realized that as bad as the government is, the real issue is that we all have major issues because we've all gone through trauma. We've all been put in the government schools. 
We've lived in this cult, this culture, this society. Almost everyone's parents have, you know, kind of done something to you, traumatized you. A lot of people have been sexually molested as children. The real answer that we're, we're coming to is working on ourselves. So if you come to a narco poker now, there's a lot of uh, narco commies who consider themselves kind of hippies. It looks like a hippie event. <laughs> like most of the day, all I do is meditate. <laughs> Uh, there's n tons of stuff on meditation. There's tons of stuff on plant medicines, ayahuasca, uh, San Pedro, DMT. And so what I'm saying is a lot of the anarcho-capitalists have realized that the most important thing for them to do was to work on themselves because as you change, the world around you literally changes. You see it differently. New opportunities come to you. And the anarcho-communists should do that, <laughs> should work on yourself because you've got lots of problems in your head and you're angry. Like I've never in my life saw a documentary on HBO and started writing the people saying I was gonna kill them. <laughs> like slight anger issue there, right? I'm trying to help you out here. Take, get into meditation, try ayahuasca, just relax. And then we'll probably see it in Arcapoco in a few years because we all agree the state sucks. And uh, while well, meditate, do ayahuasca. You can have some drinks if you want. I actually quit drinking a while ago. You can party if you want. Do whatever you want. It's anarchy. <laughs> Just don't hurt anyone. And uh, that actually really is the answer. And you know, it's the same answer for status. They're all screwed up. They're turning this whole world into hell on earth. It's because everyone screwed up. The real answer for everyone out there on earth is everyone needs to really focus on themselves and do the work on themselves. That could even be therapy, but a lot of therapies aren't great. But if you find a good hypnotherapist, they'll get that stuff out of your subconscious. You can also get there through meditation. You can get there through psychedelics. You can get there through ayahuasca and stuff. Everyone on earth is damaged. I haven't met one person who's uh, perfect yet. <laughs> and that's the real answer. So anyway, I wanted to do this video because Tons of anarcho communities, 12 year old kids in their base, parents' basement who are broke uh, are sending death threats to the producers of the anarchists and they're super nice people. And, you know, I don't even know their full story. I'm trying to get them on Anarchast right now to hear it all and hear about everything that's going on right now. And someone even asked me, are the anarchists? And you, you know what my answer was? I don't know. I never asked them. Like, it's not a, it's not like, they're nice people and they're, they're just filming and telling some stories about what's happening. And so far, all the stories are true and some bad things did happen as happens in life. But they're super nice. So hopefully they'll get on Anarchast. And really, you know, for the narco commies out there, like how long are you gonna keep doing this? Like look at, look at the history of communism. And he keeps saying, well, they just didn't do it right. How many times do you need to try it? We have yet to try anarcho-capitalism once in real, size. We're trying in Lieberland. It's actually kind of happening in Sharan. It happens in many places, but they don't even know they are. Because true anarchy, true anarcho-capitalism, true voluntarism is as natural as can be. You actually, if, you're, if everyone's doing it, it just looks like the, the nicest place. And Sharan, Mexico, by the way, is one of the nicest places. We've had them speak at Anarcopoco numerous times. I think I'm like a, I've got some sort of a title there, <laughs> like uh, esteemed somebody or something. I've donated to some things there to help them build a library or something. Uh, I am curious about the Zapatistas and if they are a little commie, which, why would you want to be a commie? I don't understand. The only way I can understand is if you hate yourself and you hate everyone. But you don't have to be that way. So if the Zapatistas are quite anarchist, but maybe kind of commie, maybe I'll go and meet with them and see if I can kind of help them. Maybe we can all do an ayahuasca ceremony together or something. So anyway, just want to put that out. This went way longer than I thought. I thought this was going to be like 10 minutes. Uh, I should mention that uh, Anarchapoco, which according to CNN, is a murder-filled nightmare uh, that uh, was completely destroyed and the founders were destroyed. Well, I'm the founder, I'm still here. Narcopoco sold out the last two years. We actually have a free event coming up called a Narcovid uh, in about a week and a half, next weekend. 
and it's totally free. People like Max Egan are speaking at it. <laughs> a lot of it's on health stuff, and this is for the narco commies. It's free. You gotta like that, right? <laughs> and there's a lot of people on there who agree with a lot of what you talk about. Anarchy. <laughs> uh, you really gotta work on yourself, and that's what this event, a lot of it's about. Uh, helping people to deal with their own issues because that's what causes most of the problems in the world. And it's all free, especially for narco commies. I'll give the commies 10% off of the free event. Just go to narcopoco.com. It's coming up in a week and a half. And uh, we'll see what a lot of these commies say after the end of the series, because they say it's all rich people. Everyone's broke. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with being rich, but you know, that's something that angers them because of some sort of issues they have with money or something. And uh, what else makes them mad? That they think we're capitalists. Well, capitalists, it, well, here's one last fig leaf to the commies. If you think like everything going on in the US today is capitalism, it's not. And we don't like it either. We don't like the government being involved in anything. We don't like any regulatory agencies. We don't like corporations even, which are totally illegitimate. Uh, we don't like fiat currencies, which are government forced by violence, legal tender law currencies. We like free market currencies. So we're actually quite a bit closer. And so just do what we did, anarcho commies. Work on yourself a bit. And maybe in a couple of years, I'll see you at Anarchopoco and we can smoke a joint or whatever, whatever you guys want to do. I, I, I don't mind the weed. And, uh, and laugh about how we were all screwed up. And I was too. That's actually a part of what the documentary is all about. We were all pretty messed up. And we all worked on ourselves. I don't know how the ending is. I hope there's a bit of a happy ending. There, there, in real life, there is a happy ending. All of us are doing better. Lisa looks amazing. Of course, some of us are dead. But the ones that are alive, Lisa has, looks uh, her, changed her life dramatically. Lily looks like a completely amazing new person. Uh, I saw Erica in Arcapoco. She's looking great. Uh, I'm doing well. We're all moving on. And, uh, and uh, so that's my fig leaf to the narco commies. Like, we don't have to be your enemies. Uh, we're actually very close. And if you, if you really do the hard work on yourself, which I've done personally, I can only speak for myself, which I've done, uh, it will improve your life dramatically. And you'll start to understand some of the things that I'm talking about and will become, everything will get a lot better. Everyone, just do the work on yourself. Do some meditation, right Lucy? Oh yeah, look at me right now, I'm just standing here, I'm meditating. And if I'm not doing that, I go for my walks, you know, just keep, keep the temple in good order and I enjoy every taco. And really the most important thing as always is, you just give lots of curses. <laughs>